as a crime rate skyrockets each year, reports reveal that in the last six years, the police service has lost over 8,000 detectives. The Democratic Alliance has called the situation a crisis. Joining us for more on this topic is the City of Cape Town Community Safety MMC, J.P. Smith. J.P., appreciate your time as always. Crisis, uh, something in the region of uh, 6,000 uh, detectives have been lost in the last number of years, and you call this a crisis. It is pretty clear. Uh, is a catastrophe. I think the figure is around 8,500 since 2017, and you're right, it is a catastrophe. So when you hear the kind of comments from Minister Tlele, the, the problem with that is that you, the, the crisis is of the making of someone. It didn't just randomly come about. The fact that police officers are being murdered is because very often the, the criminals are not being held accountable. Those same criminals are becoming emboldened through their ability to murder and murder again without consequence. And our conviction rates for serious violent crime are incredibly low. In Cape Town, our gang conviction rate is below 2%. Uh, and we saw in the Kailicha Commission of Inquiry how low those figures are. They haven't improved since. So the problem is when you strip your police service of a critical vital part a critical part of its, its um, ability to fight crime is its detectives. What happens on the street, the stuff you were hearing um, read out earlier around increasing operational, invisibility, operational activity and visibility, that's the plaster that you put on the wound. But there is something that you must do to prevent those injuries from reoccurring, and that is to start removing career criminals off the street to ensure that people who commit crime are convicted. And that in South Africa is failing uh, dismally. And it is failing because we have long not had enough detectives. We have been quoting figures of around 8,000 short on detectives. We now know that that has been substantially aggravated since 2017. When I speak to detectives in Cape Town, I hear from them that they have upwards of 200 dockets. Realistically, they can handle 20 to 25. That means that for every one of those detectives, there's 175 or more dockets that there will be justice for gone. The family, those victims, the families of those victims, they will never have justice for what's happened. And nor will the families of the police officers are being murdered. So it's absolutely imperative that we fix the problem where it, it exists, where, where the critical parts of those cogs of, of that system is missing, and that must include the detectives. Crime intelligence, which is in a dismal state, those are critical things that need to be fixed. And if we don't fix it, the organized crime syndicates, the construction mafia, these, these, the, this, this mafia state that you see arising with organized crime gaining more and more ability, that will continue to rise. No amount of visible policing will combat that. Only crime intelligence and effective investigations and prosecution will combat that. So, JP, let's talk about the implications of a detective having 200 dockets before him, only able to deal with 20 or 25 uh, at, at any given time. How does that impact on the safety of South Africa's citizens? Well, that means a, let's, let's take it away from violent crime at the moment. Let's focus on something like property crime, mm. something that many of us experience. I've personally been the victim of property crime, house breaking, theft out of motor vehicle, theft of motor vehicle, business uh, uh, crimes against businesses. This is killing the lifeblood of our economy. It's making it impossible for small businesses to cope and survive. Um, never mind the, the, the big dramatic crimes. I'm talking what happens against people every single day, from the spaza shop to the, the corner business uh, to, the, to the shopping mall. We all experience this kind of crime continuously. And when we see the statistics around the criminals who engage in this, especially aggravated, for instance, house robbery, where those criminals are repeating, repeatedly doing these crimes, uh, we see that they commit tens of crimes or sometimes a more than 100 crimes before they're effectively convicted for the first time. And that means they become very skilled at what they do. They're able to create a great deal of trauma over their careers um, to, uh, in terms of, for instance, aggravated house robbers that cause people great mental anguish because they invade the space that is most sacred to you, your home where you need to feel safe, so that you end up feeling safe nowhere. Um, and the, the net result of that is, is, is uh, widespread from, from driving uh, uh, disinvestment and a loss of confidence. Last year, we saw that Afrobarometer said that the least trusted entity in the state is now the police. Um, 
the, the, the part of the, the of government that the public now have the least trust left in, just catastrophic. It's the one thing you need to be absolutely confident and sure of. And it's not all lost. It's not doom and gloom. There are a great many people in SAPS who really want to do well and who are trying their level best. Unfortunately, the management systems that have been put in place, the operational decisions, the priorities that have been pursued are the wrong priorities. So we all know that our police service severe, the service is severely under-resourced. But there are critical components of it that have to be rapidly fixed. In Cape Town, we have, uh, through our law enforcement and Metro Police, confiscated 670 or made 674 firearm and ammunition arrests in 22 months. We're really trying to help SAPS uh, protect our public in the most vulnerable suburbs where gang violence is raging. You're all seeing the images. It's horrible. and it makes life in those communities impossible. It's destroying innocent lives. And we are taking these guns off the street. But sadly, when we do the watching briefs, we do the oversight visits through our investigative unit, which the minister, call, uh, minister clearly calls the rogue unit. Um, when we do the oversights over that, the watching briefs, we see that we're only achieving six convictions out of all of those. That's less than 1%. That is catastrophic because it means we are, we're putting officers' lives at risk, chasing people with guns, only to see those cases go nowhere. Now, criminologist Dr. Guy Lam mentioned that a shortage of detectives means less evidence is available for court proceedings. So let's talk about the impact that this has on the, on the justice system and the ability to secure convictions for the serious crimes that you've moved away from uh, shortly. When I speak to detectives, I know that they are demoralized. I mean, they're sitting with antiquated equipment, antiquated systems, sometimes laptops without internet connections, sharing a single email address. They're severely um, incapacitated in terms of the, the IT systems that should support them. The laboratories that they need to do their investigations from forensic pathology, uh, which occasionally gets uh, severely hung up because the, the toxicology results or the, in our case, for instance, with these firearm cases, the ballistic tests are not coming back timelessly. That is causing cases to be withdrawn. So we are seeing a case where you should be getting a clear cut conviction. You've caught a man with an illegal firearm. It's an open and shut matter. You're seeing those cases fail because those firearms are being sent away for ballistic testing to see if they were involved in other crimes, and nothing is coming of that. So that really is putting those communities in jeopardy who are, are most vulnerable. We're not even going to get into where all these firearms come, are coming from and how many thousands of firearms, 9,000 at least in the case of, of uh, in relation to to, to Prince Louis, for instance, was sold to gangsters and criminals and, and taxi syndicates and how much violence that has driven. Let's just focus on, on, on the detective situation. So we're seeing these cases collapse, and that gets you these single-digit and low single-digit conviction rates for, for serious violent crime that really tears lives apart. And that's unfortunately where we, I think, are most dramatically failing our, our, our citizens. Yes, we need to improve general policing now, figures, but we need to start with the lower-hanging fruit where we're able to most effectively uh, bring those numbers up and start getting some real uh, consequences start getting some meaningful convictions on those arrests, because I can tell you it totally demoralizes a traffic, uh, city law enforcement or our LEAP officers or Metro Police officers to have to arrest somebody and see that same person out in the street soon who's out on, on, on bail and their case eventually gets uh, withdrawn. That officer is not even on the firearm arrest he made when he risked his life running towards a shooting incident. Um, and keep in mind, this last two weeks we've shot once fatally two gangsters involved in shooting incidents in Cape Town where we arrived because of the gunfire detection system. We're being alerted to a shooting incident. We're racing to that incident. The gangsters turning and shooting on our officers. Our officers are taking great risk every time. In some cases, they've now killed this gangster. Uh, but in other cases, there is an arrest. And to see that arrest go nowhere is incredibly demoralizing for our staff. And I know this because they tell me this when I go on ride alongs with them. Now, JP, very quickly, let's, let's talk about what you think the plan is to, to deal with these challenges that the SAPS is facing. All this uh, taking into account that the Treasury has started talking about uh, cutting back on, on expenditure. And I'd, I'd imagine that part of that, that expenditure or, or budget would, uh, would affect uh, SAPS. Uh, unfortunately, the police have been subjected to budget cuts. And that is crippling in a situation where we're already not winning the the battle against a crime where we've seen our murder rate increase by, what, something like 15 percent over the last uh, few years. That's, those are very worrying figures. Um, 
and we are going to have to make some very tactical uh, and strategic decisions around where that limited budget investment must go and how we start turning this around. That is going to have to get cost savings. You can't see things like wasteful expenditure on catering and transport and, and, uh, um, and imbizos and other stuff that go nowhere. We are going to have to start taking some tough decisions about how we cut budget, how we cut protection services for politicians um, and, 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 and PPU. Uh, the, the protection services and make sure that we start getting our detectives number up. For me, this is a major thing. And in the absence of the National Police Service doing that, the city has started to make those investments. We've made significant investment in investigators, in information management staff, many of whom we've recruited from SAPS, um, especially those who are um, uh, near, nearing end of career with SAPS. And for instance, in the case of space of kidnapping, we have made a meaningful contribution to helping the South African police with the kidnapping cases in Cape Town, so much so that several of their last press statements have acknowledged that contribution. We're proud of that, and we want to do more to help them. JP, as usual, appreciate your time. That was City of Cape Town at Community Safety MMC. JP Smith unpacking issues for us around crime.